so the final track on Undertones is Temagog. This is a spoken word piece that I wrote one morning at like 4.50 a.m., something like that. I was going through this phase, this would have been about 2016, I think, where I was waking up at 4 a.m. and, you know, I have these, pra I have a bookshelf full of practice journals. <laughs> And, uh, you know, I would plan out my practice session. I would say, okay, 4 a.m., I've got six hours. Um, this morning, before I have any commitments, I'm going to do writing exercises and musical exercises and voice practice and, you know, all reading, meditation, exercise, all kinds of different things. And um, one of the things I started doing is just writing stream of consciousness kind of in a poetic style. And Temagog was just a stream of consciousness piece that I wrote. I haven't really edited it at all. <laughs> I pretty much just wrote one word after the other and, and that's what the song is today. Um, but I've always been interested in in memorization, well, not always, but for quite a while I've been interested in memorization, and it's a way of practicing meditation for me, memorizing passages from um, really powerful ancient texts, and, uh, you know, I memorized that George Carlin skit that influenced Millennium Man at one point, and I thought that the Temagog piece was worth trying to remember, so I put it to memory, and I decided to try it on, out on stage one day, and people just freaked out. It's like after the show, everyone just kept saying, I want to hear that again, I want to understand all the words. So I kept performing it, and I figured out how to make the delivery you know, optimally effective. And uh, of course, people kept asking, when are you going to record that song? When can I buy it on the CD? So I had to include it on undertones. And, um, you know, Temerog is a unique part of the world. There was a time in which I kind of felt like ashamed to be from Temerog because um, it doesn't have a reputation as being the most culturally enlightened place. But I hope to change that. I'm really, really so proud to be from Temerog. According to Google, Temerog has the population of 200 people. And you know, I grew up in basically a farmhouse that had a corrugated iron roof and uh, you know just bare concrete floors with some carpet thrown down that um, you know was covered in dirt and um, it was right next to a dirt road. So every time a car went past, the whole house would just get caked in dust which is probably part of the reason no one in my family has asthma or anything like that as we grew up breathing in the dust. Um, we didn't have hot water until 2001. So we used to shower in the, in the cold or we would boil up a bucket, uh, sorry, boil up a pot of water and pour it into a bucket with some cold water and um, bathe in that. This is, you know, when I was eight, nine, ten years old. So, pretty rustic. You know, my parents, I feel like they're an interesting blend of hippies, farmers, surfers, um, I, you know, people that just want to live off the grid, <laughs> libertarians, or even though they don't really have a political... Um, slant other than being very aware of taking care of the environment because that's a reality of living on the land. You know, we had we, we collected our own rainwater. We didn't have a municipal water supply available. Um, we had electricity, but during the day there was no lights on in the house. Why would you need lights in the day anyway, really? I mean, you have windows. Um, and for example, in the morning, 
after we did our hot water, we'd all shower, you know, family of six, we'd all shower, and we'd leave the plug in, and after everyone's taken their shower, the bathtub, which was under the shower, would be filled with water, and I would bucket, take buckets and water specific trees, because the whole house was just surrounded by citrus and different fruit trees. It's really a beautiful part of the world. It's, it's um, at the base of the Great Dividing Range. Um, Armadale is kind of on the top of the mountain, and uh, the ocean is, you know, 45 to a minute drive to an hour away. And uh, unique part of the world. I'm planning on writing a book about growing up in Temidog and honing my musical chops in my little bedroom there. And this, this, uh, version of the Temidog story I think is a is a cool way to start the dialogue of of telling the story of Temidog.